In this chapter, we're going to be looking at some of the most common aggregation functions in Microsoft Excel. This allows you to scan through the data set and aggregate the data up into the types of totals organized into the way that you prefer. We'll start off by looking at how you can put conditions into formulas, like for instance, an if formula or function. We're also going to look at a whole family of functions called SUMIF, COUNTIF, and AVERAGEIF, for example. Now this family of functions obviously only can handle one criteria, but then we're going to go on to look at a different family of functions that can handle multiple criteria, like sum ifs, count ifs, and average ifs, for example. And although these more complex aggregation functions can handle multiple criteria, they do come with some limitations, which we're going to discuss in detail. Lots to cover here and some subtle nuances to go over, so let's dive into it. We'll see you there. Now, as you can see down here, we're still on the pricing tab. We want to move over to the aggregate tab so we can hit control page down to move over to the aggregate tab here. Now, as you can see, our invoice data has a little bit more information. Instead of just showing us the item and the price, we now have the quantity as well. So we're going to want to calculate revenue, determine whether or not each invoice was a single item or not. Now also as the tab name aggregate would imply, we're also going to want to aggregate the data in different ways. Here we have a list of all the unique items sold and we'd like to know the revenue for each unique item. And let's also zoom out a little bit just so we can see what's below. We're also going to want to aggregate down here again by each individual item to show the number of invoices, quantity, price and the revenue. And finally, across down here to this bottom right quadrant, we're going to look at the ability to pull out individual items and look at their revenue totals as well. We've got lots to do, so let's jump into it and get started. Now to get started, let's move up to the top left quadrant here, and we're going to use control alt equals just to zoom in a little bit like this. Perfect. To start things off, we have some pretty straightforward calculations. For example, we can easily get revenue by multiplying quantity times price. So let's put in an equal sign here, grab quantity multiplied by price, and we can just hit enter. And now we want to copy that down. So we're going to use the shift key, the down arrow to get down to here, and then control D for a fill down. Now, if we jump down to the bottom, you can see here that we're wanting some totals. So we can use a great keyboard shortcut right here to get the total quantity. And we're going to hit Alt equals just like this on the keyboard, which puts in an auto sum. And notice how it automatically detects exactly where the numbers end. And then we can just hit enter. That's a really great shortcut and an easy one to hit as well. So let's use it over here for revenue. We can just hit Alt equals enter and we're done. Now what we need to do next is think really carefully about what we're going to do here for the price. If we were to just put an average in here, then it would be a simple average, which would effectively ignore the quantities. Instead, what we're going to do to get a weighted average price is we'll put in a formula where we say the revenue divided by the quantity, which will give us the weighted average price that was paid across all of these invoices. Let's hit enter here. So now with that filled in, let's pop up here and investigate this column right here. And what we want to do here is we want to determine whether or not there was a quantity of one, in which case it was a single item, otherwise it would be a non-single item. Now this is a perfect example right here where we can use an if statement. So let's put in equals if like this and open the bracket. For the logical test, we're going to say if the quantity is equal to one, then it was a single item. So we're going to put in double quotes, the word yes, close double quotes, and then we're going to put a comma. Otherwise, value if false would simply be no. And we close those double quotes and then close the brackets and we can hit enter. So now we can simply go back into the cell, select down with our shift key, and then do a control D for a fill down. So we always recommend that you check your work. So we're going to go down here. We have a quantity of one, single item, yes. Quantity of one, we're showing a yes there. Here for these two, we're also showing a yes. So it appears as though it's working perfectly. So great work filling out this first quadrant with the invoice data. Let's jump ahead to the next video where we'll start to aggregate some of these figures for each item. We'll see you there. 
So great work filling out this top left quadrant. Now we want to move down to the quadrant below. So let's zoom out a little bit. Control Alt minus can zoom you out in nice increments. And we want to get the zoom level so that we can see the revenue by item below. And as we can see down below here with the revenue by item, we have a unique list of all the item numbers. And we want to know in total how many invoices were for each item like Maxio, the quantity, the price, and ultimately the revenue. And this is where we're really going to start to aggregate some of these figures. And we just used an if function. Now we're going to explore a family of functions that has a count if, a sum if, and an average if. Let's look at them and see which ones are appropriate for this exercise. Now the first one to investigate right here for the invoices is going to be a count if function. So let's put in equals and just start typing the word count and we can see count if on the list here that we can access using the down arrow and then hit tab and it opens the bracket. First thing it's looking for here is the range. So for the range, let's select all of the items from the top, control shift down to get to the bottom. And then we're going to put in a comma. And for the criteria, we're going to select what's right here in cell B26. And then we can hit enter. Perfect. Now we're going to want to copy this formula down. So let's pop back into the cell, hit F2, and we're going to need to lock down that range that's in blue. So we're going to use the arrow key to go to the left, hold down shift so we can select the whole range, tap F4 once, that locks that reference, now we can hit enter. Now to copy it down, we select downwards with the shift key and hit control D, which is a fill down. So what is this formula really doing for us? Well, as the name count if would imply, it's counting only if a certain condition is met. So here in this first row, our condition is maxio. So it's going all the way down this list and counting how many times it sees the word maxio, which is two. And then in the next row here, it's counting down that same list, looking for the word selfie, and it finds one of them. So at the end of the day, we get the number of invoices that we're looking for. Down at the bottom right here, we could put in an alt equals, which is an auto sum, and hit enter to get the total number of invoices across the bottom. Now it's great for us to start out with the count if function, but within that family of functions, there is also a sum if and an average if. Let's explore some of those other options in the next video. We'll see you there. So in the last video, we used the count if function, which worked really well for the number of invoices. But here, in order to get the quantity, we're going to explore within that family and use the sum if function. Because what we really want to do up here for, say, Maxio, is we want to be able to sum the quantity of four together with the quantity of three to get a total of seven. So let's dive into it. If we hop into the cell right down here, we can put in equals and then just start typing sum if like this. And we can see it come up right there, sum if singular. So we can hit tab. And it's first asking for the range, which is not incredibly descriptive. But what it's looking for is it's looking for where it can find the items, the various items. And we're going to select all the way down this list here for the range. Let's put in a comma. Now for the criteria, the criteria is going to be obviously over here here, Maxio. Okay, now we put in a comma. The last thing it's looking for is what to aggregate. So in this case, we what do we want to sum? Well, we want to sum up all of these numbers here, which is the quantity. And then we can close the brackets and hit enter. Now we definitely want to make use of some good cell locking here so that we can copy this. Let's pop into the cell. Tap F2, okay? We're gonna go use the left arrow and go across. This blue reference here to range, let's tap F4 once, so that's completely locked. And the last reference here to the sum range, we're also gonna tap F4 once, so that is totally locked. Let's think about this one carefully. Um, what we'd like to do here is only lock the column B, but have the 26 unlocked. So let's tap the F4 key once, twice, and then third time is what we want. The dollar sign in front of the B locks the B, but there's no dollar sign in front of the 26, which means it can change to 27, 28, et cetera. So let's hit enter and we're all good there. So now that that's all locked down, let's just hold down the shift key, control D for a fill down. 
Great idea to check our work as well. Let's go to this bottom cell, tap F2. And as we can see, this range here, completely locked, as is the purple one, but this red cell moved down perfectly. And now that we're in the cell below, we can hit Alt equals, which is an auto sum, and hit enter, and we get the total quantity of 29. We can check our work quickly as well. Let's just visually look for Maxio. We can see it comes up there on two invoices. We can visually see that they add to seven, and we can see a quantity of seven right here. Now we can also use the sum if actually for the revenue. In fact, if we look here at Maxio, what we want to do, just as we summed these to seven, we could also sum up the revenue here, which would get to about 2,500 roughly. So this is where that cell locking that we did very carefully on the quantity is going to come in really handy. Let's go down here and we're going to hold down the shift key and we might as well grab the bottom total as well. And we're just going to do a copy over to revenue and a paste. Now we're going to need to make a modification to this formula. So let's go into this first entry here. We're going to tap F2. And what we effectively need to do is take this purple range here and move it over so that it's summing revenue. You could do that with the keyboard by going in here and changing the D to an F like this, just putting in say F there and F there, and that would do it. What you can also do if you'd like using the mouse is grab these and then move them just like this across over to revenue, and then we can hit enter. Now that we've made the change here, we need to copy it downwards. So let's just select with the shift key all the way down to the last item here, but not the total, and then hit control D, which copies and pastes everything down with a fill down. Let's discuss now what to do for this price column. We have within the family of functions a count if, a sum if, and an average if. We know the count if is not appropriate because we don't just want to count the prices that are entered. We also don't want to sum them. For instance, we wouldn't want to take these two numbers together and sum them to 710. That would not be appropriate. We have an average if function. The problem there is it's going to do a simple average of these prices, which completely ignores the deviations here in quantity. So the correct approach in order to get the weighted average price that we're truly looking for is to use revenue and quantity to back solve for it. So in here in the price column, we're going to say equals the total revenue that we have divided across the quantity that was actually sold. We hit enter. This gives us a perfect weighted average price. So what we want now is to be able to copy this formula all the way down to the bottom but we don't want to mess up the different formats we have with bold on the bottom. So we're going to do a copy, control C. Now use the shift key, highlight all the way down, including the totals, and we're going to do alt ES, or you could also do control alt V to have this come up, which is a paste special. Then we go down to formulas. So we're only pasting the formulas and we hit enter and that's done. Now, one really nice spot check that we can do here, just to check our work, is we can see that we have 12 invoices, and down here, we're showing 12 invoices. Quantity of 29 is consistent with the quantity here. The price of 278 and the revenue of 8050 is consistent with what we're getting down here. So everything looks great. So great work completing that quadrant of the dashboard. And now you've added a new family of functions to your skill set. For instance, you have count if, sum if, and average if as well. In the next video, we'll check out yet another family of great Excel functions that we can use to aggregate.